ladies, it is so amazing to be back with you. Welcome, happy Friday. I'm so happy to have you here. Today, we are going to talk about how inner work equals your energetic permission. If there is a block in your life, if there is a desire that you have been wanting for so long, but you just don't have it yet, we are going to talk about how to remove that block and how to activate it so that you get your desire today. Well, we'll see when the desire comes, but we're going to talk about it today. Welcome, ladies who are joining live. I'm so happy to see you. So the way that I'm going to break down this video is number one, why our mind blocks us, and then three steps on how to do the inner work to say, nope, we get to have the desire now. So that's what we're going to talk about. There was something that happened the other day, and I had this moment where I said, I need to make a video about this. I need to make it right now. So here we are. I have missed you so much. Number one, why is it that our mind blocks us from having the desire? It's not another person, it's not life circumstances, it is our mind. Everything begins with the brain. So if you think about yourself, let's say that you have a baby, even if you've never had a kid before, let's say that you have a baby and you are deciding to go to the store to get some ingredients to make your baby a meal. When your body is in that mode of thinking about your child, are you more likely to go to A, a store that you've been to before, that you know has the ingredients that you're looking for, that you know you can make the meal that your baby needs? Are you more likely to go with that option? Or are you more likely to go to a brand new store, maybe go out of town, go to a city that you don't normally go to, and play around with some ingredients? Maybe risk that meal for your baby. Which one are you more likely to do? Most of us as women, as as humans, we are more likely to choose option A. The reason is because our brain, our mind, is wired for survival. So, with that being said, any desire that you have, if you feel that there is a block, it is most likely because there is another path that you are not taking, because you cannot see it yet, because your mind is going, let's just keep this baby, you, safe. Now let's say that you have that high vibrational energy. Maybe you've just had a really intimate moment with your partner. Maybe you're wearing an outfit that feels so good. Maybe your makeup was so good today and you just feel, I feel at my best. I feel like I can do anything right now. That high vibrational feeling. When you have a high vibration, it will feel very easy to be in your feminine energy. You just know that you're in it because your body feels so good. When you're in this mode, now let's say that you're taking your baby to go and get the ingredients for this meal. How much more likely are you to go to this other store, the one that you're not so familiar with? You are probably more likely to go. The reason is because that high vibration state has shifted you out of the survival mode. Now your mind can go, okay, we don't have to focus on food, shelter, and safety. Now we can expand and think about other options. So this is the basis of what we're going to be talking about, how to shift between the two states and how to stay in that high vibrational state. Okay, what else did I wanna say? Uh, okay, so before step one, so why the mind likes to keep us safe and likes to keep us comfortable is so that we can survive, so that we can stay safe. However, with the world that we are living in, I love this generation. Every time I'm writing in my gratitude journal, I'm like, God, thank you for making me a part of this generation because the opportunity that we have is to take what other people have done, download it into our own lives, and teach our mind, now it's safe to do that. Here's an example. This is actually a personal example that has happened to me. The way that I used to date was one person at a time. Boyfriend, girlfriend, very committed. And then I came across the idea of rotational dating. And I started hearing all of these stories of women. One of my best friends to this day is so, so um, just queen energy with this. When men ask her, will you be my girlfriend? She goes, I'm not looking to be a girlfriend. I'm looking to be a wife, but we can continue to date. She's just so good and just queen energy with it. I did not know that it was possible to do that. My limiting belief was men will not want to continue to date you if you say you're not going to be a girlfriend, if you're only available to be a wife. When we see other women set these standards and share their story, what it does is it teaches our mind, okay, it's safe to do this. If another woman can do this and it is successful for her, now it feels safe for us to do it. You can bypass 
all of the months, the years of inner work that it would take for your mind to understand a concept just by another woman showing up and saying, I've done it and it's worked. Another example, the first time that I had ever heard of a woman making seven figures in a month, my mind was blown. I thought, what? How is that possible to do with a business? At the time, I was maybe making thirty to $40,000 a month in my business, which was a lot. <laughs> I was currently work, or I was working in a restaurant the year before that, making like $400 a week. So to make $40,000 a month for me was absolutely insane. As soon as I heard this woman talk about that she was making seven figures a month, what do you think happened after that? I had my first six figure month and it just continued to grow. So other women showing up in your atmosphere, that is the inner work. And here's the thing, if there are people in your reality that have the desire that you want, you are way closer to that desire than you think. All of a sudden, let's say that you've decided, I desire to be married. I desire to run my own business. And you are seeing women pop up on your YouTube page or maybe your friends are married, everyone's getting engaged. That desire is closer than you think. That is a sign of it. So now how to actually do the inner work. Number one, change the words what if or I wish to instead why not. And I know what I've talked about before on the channel is ask what if. And what if is great, but a step further, ask why not. Why not me? I love, love, love this example so much. I think I've talked about it in so many videos and in all of the courses, but it truly was so life-changing for me. When I started having this mentality, this is what changed it for me. There was a gym that I used to go to back in Las Vegas, and I would always get a parking spot right in the front of the gym. And I was having a conversation with a man, and he had asked, how do you always park in the front? How come you never have to park in the garage? And my response was always, there are probably 50 spots up here. Somebody has to have one of the parking spots. Why not me? That changed my mentality forever with inner work, asking why not. Okay, what it does for your mind is that safety switch, it turns it off, where your brain is no longer scanning for, am I safe, am I safe? Now your brain is scanning for, hmm, why not? And why is this a limiting belief? So here's an actual example. So right before moving to Dubai, which I'm here, and by the way, ladies, I am safe from the rain and the flooding. <laughs> Thank you so much for all of your messages and for asking, I so appreciate it. It's sunny outside now, so we're all good. <laughs> right before moving to Dubai. So this was back in October when I came to visit. Right now it's April. So when I came to visit, I just fell in love with this city. Every person I talked to is from a different culture, a different country, and people are very open-minded, very passionate, and just very excited for life being here. And I craved that energy so much. So when I went back home to Las Vegas, I started thinking, oh, should I move there? I don't know. I just kept going back and forth. And I asked myself, rather than what if, I asked why not? And what that unlocked for me is what has gotten me here to Dubai physically right now. So what started happening is when I asked why not, my mind goes, this is why, this is why, and this is why. You want your mind to shoot those questions to you because then what's going to happen is you can write them out, you can give an answer, and now your brain is silent going, okay. So what this actually looks like, what my mind did, so an example, when I asked why not move to Dubai, the first limiting belief, your car is here in the US. How are you going to ship your car? Are you gonna buy a new car? All this stuff. And the answer that I got was just ship the car. My car is currently being shipped right now. The second limiting belief was it's gonna be so much work to get a visa. I don't know how to do it. Why not hire an agent to do it for you? Oh my gosh, I'm finally picking up my visa today, by the way, ladies, <laughs> which means I get to move into my apartment as soon as possible. I was telling you that this apartment that I found, it is my dream apartment. I have been wanting to move in for so long. I found this apartment about two weeks ago and oh, the story of how it happened, once I'm actually there physically, I'll share the story, but I wasn't able to move into the apartment until I got my visa or my Emirates ID, which just came in today. I'm so excited. <laughs> so anyways, I hired an agent to take care of the visa 
it was the easiest thing. Another limitation that came up was you're gonna miss your family. Well, why not just bring your family out here? I just booked a flight for my mom. She's gonna be here next month. So all of these limitations, the reason why it's so great for the limiting beliefs to come up is because as soon as your mind can get to the other side of it, now it feels safe to move. Where before you would feel frozen and go, oh no, no, what if, what if, it would be nice. Ask why not, let the limiting beliefs come. And I wanna say go to war with them, but <laughs> literally write them out and say, nope, this is not going to keep us stuck. Give yourself that answer, that's what we need. We just are searching for safety, we're searching for peace. As feminine energy, we need to know that there is an answer to the problem. You giving the opposite to that limiting belief, why not just ship the car? Why not just bring your family out? That is how you turn that safety switch off. And now you're free to move. Now you're free to allow the desire to come. As soon as I got rid of those limiting beliefs, everything just worked out and now I'm here. And it was so much easier than I expected. Okay, here's the thing too. I know all of you have had this experience. If you've been with me for a while, you've had this experience at least once. When you are doing this inner work and you have the desire, you look back and you realize all of the steps were there, you just couldn't see it. Your eyes and your ears are closed until your brain goes, now it's safe to open them. So for example, there were, okay, I love this example because it's so clear and it's happened to almost every one of my students and clients. There's certain books that you might read where when you pick it up, you're like, mm, this is so boring, I can't understand it. Close the book and you move on. Well then maybe things happen like a breakup or you invest in a course or you start a new business and now all of a sudden you feel the urge to go and pick up that book again, you will feel like it is a completely different book. This happened to me with my favorite, favorite man in this world, Dr. Joe Dispenza. He, uh, what book was it? I think it was either Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself or Becoming Supernatural. When I opened that book, <laughs> I did not understand it. The first time I was like, what is this? What are neural pathways? What is epigenetics? Why would that be important for my life? Then when I went back after doing some inner work, oh, you can literally change your genetics. If you have been wired to be addicted to stress, if you have been wired to attract toxic partners, if disease and cancer runs in your family, you can change your genes. Just like that safety switch that we talked about, you can flip it on and off. You can flip certain genetics on and off. I had no idea and I was mind blown. <laughs> Just so crazy how our eyes and our ears are closed until we do certain inner work. This is the inner work. Number one, asking why not. Get rid of uh, I wish. No more. Okay, what else did I wanna say about this? Oh yes, okay. The thing is too, God will send the resources to you. He will send the resources once you ask why not. An example of this is as soon as I decided, okay, I'm gonna to move to Dubai, why not? <laughs> That's literally the answer I give. When people ask, why did you move to Dubai? Why not? I love the city, life is short. That is the answer that I give. And it is just the best city. I feel like it's changed me so much and I've only been here for maybe three and a half weeks. So what happened once I decided is I started seeing all of these videos of expats living in Dubai. Like the videos were titled Expat Life. One of my amazing, amazing Glow Girls, hello if you're watching this, you know who you are. I had a Glow Girls meet up here back in October and she came and I just love this girl so much. We, she took me out to go and see her apartment and just showed me the area. She was so amazing. And after I decided that I'm going to move here, I didn't even tell her, but she messaged me. She goes, hey Alexis, just in case you're thinking of moving here, here is a visa agent that you can use. They will handle all of the paperwork and all of the process for you. I just felt like you should have this. I was thinking, God, you are good. You don't even have to lift a finger. I know you ladies have experienced this. Just thinking, how in the world did this resource come? You didn't even have to lift a finger. You lifting the finger looks like you doing your inner work. It looks like you opening your mouth and saying, why not? When you're faced with that block of your desire. Okay, let's see. So to summarize this uh, first point, 
Your brain just needs to work through the excuses and the limiting beliefs. Asking why not is going to do that for you. Let's see. Oh, hello ladies in the chat. I'm gonna finish these second and then the third points and then we'll go ahead and chat and ask any questions, feel free. Okay, number two is my favorite because here's the story that I was telling you about happened the other day. So number two is decide you get to have it. Decide that you get to have the desire. This is what happened to me and it was such a wake up call like where else am I doing this in my life? So I'm doing my morning stretch. I always stretch after I do my workout and for the last maybe three years I've been working on doing the splits. So I used to do gymnastics and cheerleading when I was younger and I could do the splits no problem. However, with my right leg forward, so there's the left split, the middle, and then the right leg forward. With my right leg forward, it was always hard for me growing up. In cheerleading, I remember I used to get in trouble because I couldn't get the right leg forward. It was just less flexible than my other legs, or other leg. <laughs> I've only got two, okay? So what happened the other day was I was doing my right splits. I always hold it for 30 seconds, every day, Monday through Friday. And it's like maybe this far from the ground. However, it's been like that for a year. I swear it's been like this. And then it just slowly gets closer and closer. The other day I am, I'm doing this stretch. And what happens is this thought comes to me, Alexis, if you've been doing this for three years, how come you don't have the splits by now? And I was like, dang, where did that voice come from? <laughs> okay, sometimes she's harsh. And I thought, wait a second. I, I literally felt like two different versions of me were talking to each other. Wait a second. Why don't I have the splits yet? I have been stretching for three years. I should have it by now. What do you think happened after I said this to myself? I literally get chills. I got the splits. My legs went on the ground like this. I'm like, what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> I just did not decide that I got to do it until that moment. We are doing this in so many areas of our life that we cannot even see. Once you start doing inner work, little thoughts like this will start to come to you and say, why don't, why don't you have this desire yet? Why aren't you doing this? And then the current version of you has to answer. I had to answer and go, actually, there's no excuse. I have been stretching for years. I should have it down by now. Now I feel so good. I'm like, okay, this is, my hips are more open. My body is more loose. That feminine energy is activated even more. So that was such a big wake up call. And then I start thinking, what are all the other areas of my life? I've seen women do this with things like makeup. Like one day they just decide to wake up and they know how to do their makeup. One day they wake up and they decide they know how to cook and all the ingredients, recipes just come to them. This is our gift as women. We already have the answer. We just have to allow ourselves to let it out. So I have the journal prompt. Or, okay, actually before this, either your brain is telling you what you get to have or you are telling your brain what you get to have. It's one or the other. So a journal prompt that I have for you. With this current desire, think about your deepest desire right now. Is it to have financial freedom? Do you want to be running your dream business? Do you want to be wearing your dream wardrobe every day? Do you want to be in the most loving, safe, beautiful, healthy relationship? What is your deepest desire? Take a second to think about that. And then you're going to journal. Who is deciding this desire? Is it my brain deciding or is it me deciding? If you don't have the desire yet, it is your brain. So just let whatever information comes out, just let it flow when you journal and your eyes and your ears will start to open to your next step of what you need to do to have this desire. I cannot wait to share the third one with you because this, this happened to me this week. <laughs> I feel like I've been sharing so much personal inner work with you ladies and I love it. Also, I have to say my Divide vlog, thank you for all of the messages that you've shared with me. 
I went so back and forth on that vlog and I almost cut out like half of the vlog. The vlog is an hour. I've never uploaded an hour vlog. I thought this is gonna be so long. I don't know if the girls will wanna watch it. I don't know if I should share this current inner work that I'm going through, but I just decided why not? Let me just do it. I trust these women. I love these women. This is my dream community. That vlog is, it has changed so, so many um, ideas that I've had approaching YouTube. And a lot of you have told me that it's also changed your life. Thank you. That blows my mind to hear and I'm so grateful. Thank you for always receiving me with so much safety and so much love. I love, love, love you. I love this community and I'm excited to make more vlogs. I think that's actually my most watched vlog and I thought it would be the least watched because it was so long and uh, just different than any other style that I've done. But I'm telling you, Dubai is changing me. I cannot wait to see an, another few months from now. So um, something that I was talking about in the vlog, I'm gonna go back to in point number three. Uh, okay, so why does deciding work? Why does deciding remove that block and allow you to have the desire? Your brain, I've talked about this in the Master Your Feminine Energy course, your brain can only receive what it believes. This goes back to neuroscience. So let's say that, I'm trying to think of a practical example. Okay, this actually happened to me. Let's say that you have this belief that you can only make $2,000 a month. Well, if you have that belief, all of the opportunities that would make you $6,000 a month, you are not going to take those opportunities. Subconsciously, your mind is going to close your eyes and your ears to them. It's not going to allow you to have them because your mind will only receive what it believes. Otherwise, it's too much to handle. Our brain won't believe it. If somebody comes with an opportunity that could make you that $6,000, you will not believe it because your brain cannot let anything in that you don't receive. So what started happening for me when I was working in the restaurant, this was about two years ago. I was working as a hostess and I was making, oh my gosh, I just remember struggling so much financially. And I would write on, we had little sticky notes for like the seating arrangements. I would take those sticky notes when I was the only hostess at a stand and I would start writing out. If no rules existed to life, what would be my dream income? And I was really um, investing in building my clothing brand, Solista Wear, at the time. So then when that question came, I thought, okay, how many robes, how many pajama sets would I have to sell every single day to make this income? And then I started to see that it was doable. And then I started to see that I could quit my job and feel safe. And then I started to see that if I quit my job, felt safe, and started investing more in my dream businesses, that the financial abundance that I desired, it would come and now I have it. It was about, it was a little over a year later that I had had my first six figure year, I, or six figure month. I never ever thought that was possible. It started with standing at that hostess stand, the job that I hated, on a sticky note writing, what would happen if there were no rules to life? What if I decided that this got to be my reality? I started feeding my brain that this is what we believe. We believe that we are running our dream business. We believe that we are making this amount. We believe that because we have this amount, these are the trips that we would take. This is the style that I would dress in. I just started playing with all these ideas and my brain started believing it. And then I was led to quit my job. Also, <laughs> this is okay. This is funny, but not funny. Um, so remember how I told you ladies that the sign that I asked for was rain. I was sitting at my desk, which I miss my desk. I was sitting at my desk in Las Vegas, summer day, not a cloud in the sky. And I asked God if I should quit my job. I had just started the feminine glow business at the time. I said, God, if I should quit my job, please make it rain. 10 minutes later, it rained. I drove to work that day, put in my two weeks. The rest is history. So the funny thing, oh my gosh. So you know how it's raining so much in Dubai? We have not had natural rain. Dubai creates rain, which I'm still learning about. We have not had natural rain in years, I think 20 plus years. So <laughs> you know who you are. You emailed me and she goes, um, Alexis, I'm starting to think that you ask God for another sign with that rain that's pouring down. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, I actually didn't, but I think it's a sign that I didn't know I needed. So I just love you ladies. I love how connected we all are. And there was another message. I actually received this from two amazing ladies. 
and what they said blew my mind and this goes into the lesson two because timing timing is everything if you have done these three steps that we're talking about trust me the desire is on the way even if it's not in the timeline that you want let's get some more light in here so uh my car is currently in the middle of the ocean on a boat being shipped here so I had just bought my dream car, the Mercedes G-Wagon, in January of this year. I was so excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, I'll ship this to Dubai. It'll take 60 days. It'll be there by the time I get there. Well, things happened and there were delays with shipping my car. Now it's not going to be here till June. At first, like I told you ladies, I was so bummed, but then I thought, you know what? God's plan. So two ladies from the Glow Girl community messaged me and they said, Alexis, now we know why God did not have your car already there for you. Now we know why he delayed the shipping. Because if my car was here, it would have gotten destroyed with all the flooding from the rain. What's happening in Dubai is crazy right now with the rain. So many businesses, so many cars, so many homes are destroyed because infrastructure is not meant to hold the rain that we had this, this week. I got chills opening their messages because now I see why I don't have the desire yet. I actually do have the desire. The desire is safe, it's on its way to me. If I had the desire right now, my car, my dream car that I've been driving for like two months would be flooded and destroyed. So if you feel, God, I've done the inner work, why is my desire not here? Oh, it's here, but you are being protected in ways that you can't even see or begin to imagine. So never question why is the desire not here. It's coming if you've done the inner work. Okay, moving on to, oh, okay, actually one more example. I have so many examples. <laughs> Life is just crazy. This is my first time living alone, so it's really a deep dive into knowing myself and just dealing with challenges on my own. You know how before I was saying, you have to decide and whatever you believe, you have to receive it. Your brain looks for ways to receive it. So if you believe that you make six figures every month, your brain is going to be seeing opportunities and thinking of things that somebody who believes they make $10,000 a month, they're not gonna see those opportunities. The way that you wire your brain creates your reality. So I had this uh, rewiring of my brain a few years ago when I really dove deep into my inner work journey where I said, I'm not available to be embarrassed anymore. I'm just so tired of being self-conscious and I'm not here for it. It was a lot of deep inner work and still things will come up where I have to sit through it and say, nope, I'm not here to be embarrassed. Something happened at the gym two days ago. No, actually yesterday. <laughs> and it was one of those moments where I said, Alexis, sit through the discomfort because we're not available to be embarrassed. I have taught my brain that we're not here for it. And because of that, I don't believe when things should be embarrassing. For me, it's not embarrassing. What happened was, I'm trying to do the best that I can with the gym that I have. So I'm in this Airbnb right now and it's a beautiful apartment complex. There's a nice gym downstairs. For my leg days, I love to do that leg press. Do you ladies know that machine where you lean back and your legs are right here against this flat panel and you add weight and you push like this. It tones your legs so much. So I love this machine. So there's no leg press in this gym with the apartment complex however i saw this amazing badass woman the other day she took the squat rack and then she took one of those bench presses she laid the bench press under the squat rack she took the squat bar okay i wish that i had a picture to show you took the squat bar she put she laid back on the bench press okay this is her laying back these are her feet she put them on the bar where you're supposed to squat and put it right here. She put her feet there and used it as a leg press. I was like, oh, I'm so borrowing that idea. So, okay, she's awesome. So yesterday I'm like, okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be so great. <laughs> I got stuck. So I, I was putting weight on, I was feeling so good. By the last set, my legs were starting to shake a little bit and um, what happens is you have to hook the squat rack bar back in. Otherwise, it will fall on you. <laughs> I could not hook it. I'm like turning my feet. I, it's also an awkward angle, so you can't like reach up and grab it. I thought that I was just, 
I didn't know what I was gonna do. I was like, the squat bar is gonna fall on me. I don't know, like I'm just gonna get crushed right here. This sweet guy comes over and flips it for me so that it hooks onto the side. I'm like, oh my gosh, thank you, thank you. The men here are just so manly. Like <laughs> you are always taken care of as a woman here. So he saved my life. <laughs> In that moment, I had a, it felt like, you know when you get embarrassed and you feel that heat in your face? I have not felt that in so long. I felt a little bit start to come. I literally imagined that I was catching the emotion in my body and saying, who invented embarrassment? And why are you deciding to have it right now? Does this feel good? Do you want to run this embarrassment through your body? And my answer was no. Why would I be embarrassed? I couldn't hook it, so what? Who decides the rules to life? Why would I choose to be embarrassed? And it was gone. That is how I handle energy that I'm not available for. So because I've taught my brain that we're not embarrassed, it cannot exist and run through my body. My mind will always catch it and be aware of it. If you have not done that inner work, the embarrassment will just run through your body and you're not aware of it. But when you're aware, you catch it and go, nope, we're not here for this. All it takes is awareness and you deciding, I'm not here for this. Okay, so that was number two, decide that you get to have it. <laughs> you ladies are so sweet. Be careful, dear. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be careful. <laughs> I don't know if I'll be doing that leg press again. <laughs> yes. Okay, number three. Oh, okay, I love this one. Then we'll go ahead and talk in the chat. Okay, number three, cut out the distractions cut them out right now. I feel like somebody needs to hear this. Cut out the distractions. What I've learned is that when your rubber band is stretching, new things are happening. Maybe you're starting to make more money or starting to allow yourself to accept healthy masculine energy. Maybe you are starting to create your dream life and that rubber band is stretching. Your mind is going to feel very similar to the way it does when it's overstimulated. You know when you are, oh my gosh, I, I just heard about this term the other day. It's called the two screen, I forget, I forget what it's called exactly, but like the two screen life, where you're watching TV, but you're also scrolling on your phone. That's just how our generation is nowadays. It always is so overstimulated. So when your brain is overstimulated, there's just so much messages, emails, constantly scrolling, constantly calling, um, constantly snacking, constantly activating pleasure. That constant draining of dopamine is your brain becoming fried because it is so overstimulated. When this happens, now you can't feel things anymore because all of that dopamine that was supposed to be used up for enjoying a walk in the park or enjoying a text from your lover, now you can't enjoy that so much because all of the dopamine has been used up to scroll, to snack, cut out the overstimulation, cut out the distractions. Going back to that first part, when your rubber band is stretching, it's going to feel very similar to being overstimulated. Why? Because it's a feeling of discomfort. When you're starting to receive, let's say that you receive um, the most money that you've ever received. Let's say that you just start your YouTube channel. A lot of you ladies in my Divine and Aligned business course, once you've started your channel, you've probably seen this happen. That first month that you make a lot of money through YouTube, through that ad revenue, your mind goes, what? This is real? I was just creating and having fun and I get paid to do it. It feels uncomfortable because that rubber band goes, this is new, now we're stretching. Same thing with when you're overstimulated. It feels uncomfortable and you almost just wanna go, let's go back to the way that we were before. We don't quite know if this is safe. It's like that mom with the baby, that analogy that we talked about in the beginning. You don't know if going to that brand new store is safe. You don't know if having that amount of money is safe. Because what if your family member starts to look at you as greedy? What if people start to think that you are no longer the same person that you used to be? Your brain doesn't know that it's safe. You have to decide that it's safe. So when you feel overstimulated, what is the first thing that you do? Distract yourself. Because that feeling of the dopamine being gone, it's too uncomfortable. What I was sharing with you ladies in the vlog is that when I came here, I was so overstimulated. There was 
visa stuff and mixed emotions and challenges and just so much newness to the city that I had days where I would scroll for hours and snack more than I usually do. And I was like, what is going on, Alexis? You know that this is not in alignment with the best version of you. And I had this moment, I talk about it more in the blog, where I decided, nope, I'm not here for this anymore. We've done way too much inner work to slide back. We know that this discomfort is what is causing the distractions. Let's sit through the discomfort so that we can elevate to the next level. That is exactly what's happened. <clears throat> so, okay, here's what's so crazy. I love, love that we did that blog because now I feel more safe to share things like this. So remember how I was saying that I had this moment with God where I'm like, God, why am I so drawn towards distractions? Like, I don't spend hours on TikTok. Why do I feel the need to do that? And what I felt him say was, because you do not want to look at yourself fully. Living alone is the first time that you're going to have to see all of your habits, all of your beliefs. You don't have any other energy to bounce off of. It's just you. You have to look at yourself fully. I thought, oh yeah, I've never really done that before. And then a step further, I felt God saying, if you want to be able to see your husband walk by, how are you going to be able to see him if you can't even see yourself fully? And then how are you going to allow him to see the deepest, the most intimate parts of you if you won't even look at those? God will tell you how it is. That is one thing about God. <laughs> So I was journaling, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, what am I afraid to face? Who told me that this is bad? And why am I letting this distract me? The craziest thing, so this was, two, this was a week and a half ago that I was in my journal doing this inner work. This week, because I haven't had distractions, what has happened is I've been going for more walks and when I've gone for walks, what happened is I met three different men in the span of two days who have asked to take me out on dates. And I didn't really think anything of it. I thought, oh, okay, like that's cool. Maybe it's just because I'm getting out more. But then putting the pieces together, I realized I had that conversation with God where I felt I'm ready for marriage. I'm ready for that next step of my inner work. And what happens a week later? All of these men are starting to come into my reality. More dates are happening, more masculine energy I'm being exposed to. Your inner work of looking at yourself fully, of removing the distractions, is unlocking another desire that is not even correlated. So that desire to actually just be present to my body and to feel good, to feel motivated, connected to my desire of marriage. That is how inner work works. It's like a huge spider web. You do one layer of inner work, something else is related and something else is happening at the same time. That's why, so we talk about this in the Gold Vault, quantum physics and timeline shifting. There are multiple timelines happening at the same time and this is what I mean. There's multiple timelines of your life that are being unlocked and being pieced and woven together because of the inner work that you are doing right now it is unlocking another desire and you can't even see it. By going for walks, I thought, okay, good, I'm removing distractions, I'm not on my phone. Meanwhile, this happened yesterday, this man comes, he's like, excuse me, I've been, I've been following you for the past half mile, I have to know your name, I have to talk to you. So what if that man is my future husband? I don't know if he will be. <laughs> We're gonna still go on a date first, but what if me putting down my phone because I decided to do that inner work unlocked another layer of inner work. Inner work is your energetic permission to live your dream life. The way it connects. It's so difficult to put it into words and I hope that this sums it up. On this note, cutting out the distractions. So I want you to do a distraction detox and what this is going to look like, it's going to be fun, okay? It's going to feel good. Who knows, you might meet your future husband or your future best friend from it. Set up a masculine energy structure of how you are going to go about using this distraction. So my distraction was social media, it was TikTok. It was escaping the feelings of discomfort from seeing myself fully. So because of that, um, 
but I just lose my train of thought. Oh yeah, okay, because of that, I had to go, okay, Alexis, rather than four hours on social media, we are going to set up a masculine energy structure. So my structure before was no social media before 9.30 a.m. and after 9.30 p.m. And I would just feel so much better. But now I've limited it even more. I've said 45 minutes of social media a day. How would you like to use that? That has been my uh, distraction detox and it has felt so good. I have so much energy. I feel like my skin is nicer. I feel like my mood is better. More creativity is coming. So many ideas for the Royalty and Riches Dubai retreat is coming. It's just, oh, it feels so good. And not only that, but now I've had more energy and more time because I'm sitting here on the couch. I'm like, what do I do? <laughs> I've already used my 45 minutes. Okay, let's go for a walk. And during those walks, I'm meeting people that might change my life or maybe might become future friends. There's so many amazing people at the park that I've met. And if that's one thing that I love about Dubai, if you walk outside, you're going to meet people that are going to be incredible. You are going to learn something new. Every single person that I've met is from a different country, a different culture. Russia, London, Japan, it just, beautiful here. India, there's so many amazing cultures here. Okay, what did I want to say about this? Yes, okay, that was my three points that I wanted to share. Other announcements. Oh, okay, one more thing. Uh, I wanted to talk about how sometimes other people will give you energetic permission and it's because of the inner work that you've allowed. So a small, small example of this and then I'll check in with the chat my fabulous retreat planner. So I met her back in November when I decided to do the Hawaii retreat in February, which I miss you ladies. Hello if you're watching this. I met her and it was my first time ever hiring somebody for the Feminine Glow team. She changed my life. Oh my gosh, she brought my dream retreat to life, is continuing to plan the rest of the retreats for this year. We have our Royalty and Riches Dubai retreat happening in about 40 days. And one thing that happened with her when we first sat down on our calls and we were planning the Hawaii retreat, she had this spreadsheet and I remember she goes, okay, we're going to have a budget of about $60,000 for this retreat. I was like, what? <laughs> it's going to cost how much to plan this retreat? She goes, yeah, this is normal. And that gave me energetic permission to bring more ideas to life and to play around with money even more. I was thinking it will cost maybe $20,000 to do a retreat. She goes, no, you get to have a budget of $60,000. For Dubai, we're doing, I don't want to say too much because I love to keep it a surprise, but we're doing um, things like hiring private chefs and the villa, oh my gosh, the villa that it's at. I love to do my retreats in a home. It just feels more cozy and more feminine energy to me especially because divine and or divine align <laughs> especially because royalty and riches is going to be so intimate it's going to be just a few of us women and i really want to get to know the girls i loved the hawaii retreat so much that was my dream the one regret that i have is i didn't sit down and actually hear everyone's story and actually work with them through everything that they're going through that's what I want for royalty and riches. So that's why it sold out a lot quicker and that's why there's less spots. I really want this one to be more intimate. And because of this retreat, it's going to be very luxurious and just very high vibrational. My retreat planner goes, we're gonna need a higher budget for this one. And my rubber band is stretching like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe. Um, just spending like $30,000 for a villa and paying thousands for some of the activities. I've never spent that kind of money before. And for me, it's such a huge relief of energetic permission that it's safe to spend money. It's safe to invest in these luxurious experiences for the community. So sometimes other people will come into your life and give you that permission, but it's because your inner work has called that in. My inner work allowed me to even hire my retreat planner. I was so scared before because I wanted to control everything. But because I released that control, she joined the team. And another part of that too, I just hired another team member for the Feminine Glow. She is from the Glow Girl community. And it's just amazing how connected we all are and how one thing over here unlocks a completely different thing over here. So 
in our work is energetic permission and it is so beautiful. I'm so grateful that we get to do it together. Okay, let me finally check in with the chat. I'm tearing up, God is good. God is so, so good. <laughs> I love all the examples, thank you. You have changed my life. Oh, Feroza, thank you, girl. Any questions, ladies, about what we just discussed? Energetic permission, why our mind blocks us. Hi, Alexis, love from Portugal. Oh my gosh, I'm planning a trip to Portugal with my sister and one of my best girlfriends. Uh, hopefully I see you there, Ines. What do you think about reaching out to create job opportunities? Am I being in my masculine energy? Okay, girl, I love that you asked this. Let me finish your question. And if so, how can I attract those opportunities instead? Okay, Ines, you know how I was just telling you that I hired somebody else for the Feminine Glow team? So now I have my retreat planner and I have this amazing, amazing woman. Guess how I hired this woman? She reached out to me. So your question, uh, do you think that reaching out to create job opportunities is masculine energy? It's not so much about the action that you're doing, it's about the intention of whether or not it's masculine or feminine energy. If your intention is to get yourself out of survival mode, to uh, make money, that could be more masculine energy because it's very goal oriented and because it's very action oriented. If your job is to go, I desire this new life, I desire a new alignment, I'm craving a new team to work with, I'm craving a new opportunity, I feel like this uh, boss or this team, this company might be a great fit. You reaching out would be from an intention of expanding your feminine energy. So my team member, she is amazing. <laughs> I told her I need to have you at one of the retreats so that I can actually meet you in person. So she emailed me maybe a month ago and I've had it on my heart. I've been wanting to, I've just been needing help because running both businesses, Soli Story and The Feminine Glow, it's been so overwhelming and I try to really be thoughtful when I give emails and DMs back, but it's just, honestly, it's too much to do sometimes. <clears throat> so she reaches out to me. She goes, hey, Alexis, I really want to join your gold vault course. That's my money and quantum physics course. She goes, I really want to join your gold vault course. I want to lovingly point out that there's a grammatical error on your website. I think you meant to put this link instead of this link. Just wanted to point that out to you. Thank you for all that you do. I love being a glow girl. She sent me an email like that. I was like, oh my gosh, girl, thank you. <laughs> I had no idea. And I so appreciate you reaching out. I hope that you have a beautiful day and I can't wait to see you in the course. And then she sends me, she goes, thank you so much, Alexis. And you know, I am an executive assistant for this company. Here's my background, here's my resume. If you're ever looking to grow your team, I am more than happy to talk with you. And I just got this feeling to reach out and say, when can you set up a Zoom call? We set up a Zoom call maybe a week, a week and a half ago. And immediately when I saw her and heard her spoke, I fell in love with her. And I knew I want this girl on my team. She just, her energy is very, um, very passionate. So beautiful and light. And I could tell that she has a passion for helping women who run businesses. So we talk on the Zoom call, I'm asking her like all the logical questions, but I already know that I'm gonna hire her. And how, so after that call, um, we have made it official and we start training next week. So if you ladies are getting emails, they are no longer going to be from me, they're going to be from her. And I have to say, I'm so grateful for the emails and the DMs and the messages that you send me. Thank you so much. She is gonna still make sure that I can see what you write, especially if they're transformation messages. So her reaching out, some people might say that's masculine energy to reach out to a job, but now she is working in a job, not even a job, in a position that she loves. I told her, girl, work whenever you want. Here's what I need done every week and you can do it from the beach. You can do it on any time that you want. I'm just so grateful that you are here to support. That was feminine energy because her intention was I want to help, I want to share, I want to connect, and let's just see where this goes. You have to be very careful with the way that the internet is today, getting caught up in the masculine, the feminine energy terms. As I've told you ladies before, I get questions all the time. 
Alexis, is it masculine to go to the gym? Is it masculine to get a tattoo? Is it masculine to text a guy first? What is your intention? Are you connected to your body when you are doing it? Or are you task and goal oriented trying to accomplish something? That's more masculine energy. If you're flowing and you feel good and you feel this, this is aligned for me. That is your feminine energy, my girl. So that is the answer. Uh, how do I know that I'm ready to step into my desire and new identity? How do I know I've done enough inner work? I feel that there's always so much more to do. Alexandra, I feel you, girl. I'm always doing inner work. You are already worthy. You are already whole. You are already complete. The inner work that you do is just the cherry on top. That's how I look at it. You've already done all the inner work that you need for this point in your life. So how do you know that you're ready to step into your new identity? Number one, look at what's showing up around you in your field. Like we were talking about earlier, let's say that you desire, or that you, <laughs> that was a mix of desire and decide. <laughs> let's say that you decide, I'm ready to be married. And all of a sudden, all of your friends are getting engaged. Well, that's how you know that you're ready to step into that new identity because it has entered your physical reality. Another way that you'll know is sometimes people will tell you like I've had, so in the Divine and Aligned course, which by the way, ladies, we're going to be relaunching that course. That is my business course, how to activate, how to launch your dream business from start to finish. It is, it is the best, best, best inner work. If you are ready to be financially free to run your dream business. And in that course, a lot of the women, they joined not knowing what their business was going to be. And what has happened is people have told them even, uh, so we have a private Facebook group for every course. Some women, they're very good at like sharing things about health and wellness. They're very good about speaking life into others. And girls in the course have told uh, certain girls, you should be a life coach or you should, you should share about holistic health. You should be a content creator. You're so naturally good at this. One of my best friends, she always had the most beautiful jewelry. This is the one that I'm going to Portugal with. She always had all these earrings that were so pretty and she just knew how to layer them. And I would always tell her, you need to open a jewelry business. Now she's running her jewelry business. She just started, she just launched this month and I'm so excited for her. The point of that is that people will tell you and by people telling you, it's God sending an angel to say you are ready. You know how sometimes like YouTubers will speak to you or certain people on the street will just come and tell you exactly what you needed to hear. That is God delivering the message and saying you're ready. Also, if you're having the thought of your new identity, if you can feel her, if you can see her, if it feels like you can taste that new identity, girl, you are ready because you've already experienced that in the 5D. Now you're ready for the 3D. The thing about Dubai is just coming and visiting and then imagining it when I was back home, I could already feel myself being back there. I could feel myself being free and more authentic and more empowered because I could already feel that I knew I'm ready to move here. So if you can visualize it, you're ready. Thank you, Keisha. You changed my life. Lots of love from Poland. You're glowing. Thank you, girl. What does inner work mean? I call inner work personal development for the soul. So you know how there's all of these personal development coaches? This is how I started off inner work, like Tony Robbins and Grant Cardone and all these people that make books about how to change your mind, how to change your beliefs. Well, I always felt, yes, I love this, but there's something missing. It was that feminine energy essence. The feminine energy essence takes personal development and shapes it to what your heart, what your soul needs. And then it becomes inner work. So inner work is just you kind of stepping outside of your current self, looking at everything you are experiencing, looking at the way that you are showing up and asking, is this in line with the best version of me? What is it that my body truly desires? And why don't I have that yet? What am I doing that's blocking that? It's personal development for the soul. It's becoming self-aware, combining that with emotional intelligence and allowing yourself to have your dream life. That is inner work. How do I lift the block of making money as a stay-at-home mom? 
Catherine, can I just tell you something as a coach? You just told me what your block is. Your block is believing that being a stay-at-home mom is keeping money from you. If you were to phrase the question, how do I lift the block of making money? I might have given you a different answer, but because you said as a stay-at-home mom, there's some limiting belief that your mind has created to say being a stay-at-home mom makes it harder to make money. The inner work that I would do is I would get out my journal and ask, where did that belief come from? That being a mom limits the amount of money that I can make. The women that have changed my life have been stay-at-home moms. They have taken their life, they've taken their experience, and they found some sort of way to find free time to share what they've learned. And women who have kids, they have so much life experience that they have witnessed in themselves and now in their kids. And if they are able to share, it's from a whole new level of power. Because not only are they making the time out of their busy schedule, but they have learned things that most people will never learn. Being a mom is one of the best, one of the most important, one of the most time consuming jobs in the world. And the lessons that you've learned, if you can combine that with inner work, you are ready. Because now you have that mother energy, more of the goddess energy, but you also have that bright, creative feminine energy to combine it with. So I would ask, where am I limiting myself by thinking a stay-at-home mom allows me to not make as much money? Let's see. I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Yes, I love this. <laughs> hey, boo. Hey, Lisa. I love the dark feminine energy vibe. You look so pretty. Thank you, Hatoon. Oh my gosh, Hatoon. <laughs> she was one of the ones that sent me that email about my car not being here and how that was actually God's protection. Ah, uh, okay. I will take a couple more questions then I'm gonna have to go. I have to go and pick up my ID. I'm so excited. <laughs> I am praying the next time that I do a live stream with you ladies, it's in my new apartment because there is a video that I am dying to make, but I just, I need to be there in order to make it. Or maybe that's a limiting belief. <laughs> hey Alexis, what to do when my intuition is constantly telling me this person is not for me, but the person feels great at the same time? Junk food feels really great when you're eating it. How does it feel after? How does it feel when you're laying in bed a few months into constantly eating junk food thinking, oh, what would have happened if I would have just cut it out three months ago? What would my body be like? What kind of job opportunities would I feel confident to pursue? Just because it feels good does not mean that it's good for you. If your intuition is telling you, girl, you've already done half the inner work, allowing your intuition to tell you whether or not this person is for you. Now the next step is asking, do I want to feel good now or do I want to feel good later? What I would do if I were you, here's what I would do. I would start practicing delayed gratification in everything that I do. So for example, let's say that it's a Saturday and you've got laundry to do, you've got to take your dog on a walk, but you really want to cook this delicious, um, healthy meal. And let's say that you have this meal on your mind Excuse me, so example for me would be, you girls know I love making plantains. I love them, they're so good, they're so savory. If I had the plantain sitting on the countertop and I'm just craving, oh, I wanna make them so badly. They feel really good for my body, they're healthy, they taste delicious, but I've got laundry to do, I've got work to do. Hmm. Do I wanna feel good now or do I wanna feel good later? I want to feel good later because later means long term. So I'm gonna do the laundry first, even though it doesn't feel good, I'm gonna do the work first, then I'm going to cook and enjoy my plantains. That is practicing delayed gratification. Allow yourself to receive the long-term benefits and allow yourself to receive it later. When you're practicing delayed gratification, cutting off toxic relationships is no big deal because you're like, why would I feel good later when I'm going to feel terrible now? I don't do that any other area of my life, so why am I doing it now? Yes. Loud and clear, girl. <laughs> yes. Ah. 
God sent me this message through you. Oh, Fartoon, thank you, girl. <sighs> Sandra, I love you. Alexis, I could not do delayed gratification when I saw you were live this morning. <laughs> I had to see you live. Sandra, I love you, girl. <laughs> I love you so much. Oh. I love our Facebook groups for the courses because Sandra posted this morning. She goes, I tried Alexis's curly hair routine. This is how my curls turned out and they're so gorgeous. I love seeing the little parts of your lives like this. Yes. What if my desire is something I have no control of? It's like winning a lottery. I can't decide if I'm gonna get it. What do I do in this situation? Uh, so why would you need control of your desire? That's what I would ask, number one. Because if I'm controlling my desire, I feel like it's not truly in alignment, if it's from me rather than God bringing it. I love that you mentioned the lottery because the way that I look at the lottery is literally, somebody's gotta win, why can't it be me? Have you ever heard of those people who win the lottery multiple times? <laughs> it is because they have decided, they've asked, why not me? Somebody's number is going to get drawn. So um, let me go back to that question. Oh, where was it? Where was it? Yes. Yeah, so what if my desire is something I have no control of? I'm trying to think. If you could give me an example where you would need control of your desire, that would help me answer it a little bit better. Oh, okay. Uh, something that's coming to me is let's say that you really desire to have kids, but your body cannot have kids. Like maybe your health is not the best or it's just not working out. So a desire like that is I would go deeper into the desire. What is it that I truly desire? Maybe it's companionship. Maybe it's creating a powerful generation. Maybe it's giving my nurturing energy. Is it fully in alignment to give my nurturing energy to a child or could I give it to a business, to another area? Okay, let's say that it is with a child. So what are some reasons that I can't have kids right now? Okay, list out all the reasons. Then after that, ask, what are other options that I have not thought about yet? Who do I know that could open my eyes, open my ears to other options? Maybe there is an option of doing IVF. Maybe there's an option of adopting. Maybe the desire actually wasn't to have kids, but to channel your nurturing energy so you go and start a business get to the root of your desire. And then once you get there, that's where your eyes and your ears will be open to other options. Hmm. Yep. Let's see. You mentioning Portugal was my divine sign. Thank you, I decided last night. We'll send photos. Sister hug. Oh my gosh, Karen, send photos, girl. Yeah, Portugal seems beautiful. All right. I love you. Thank you. I love you, ladies. <laughs> Your ID picture is going to look so good. Oh my gosh, Kathleen. <laughs> Did you see my Instagram about that? <laughs> Thank you so much. So if you don't uh, follow me on Instagram, I had posted that I went to go get my ID picture taken. I felt so cute and my hair was pulled back. My makeup was super light and natural. I was just feeling so beautiful. And so I go and get my picture taken. I'm like, okay, it's great. He pulls it up on the computer. I'm like, okay, can you just send the file to me? Thank you. He starts Photoshopping it. I'm like, what in the world is this? I don't know if it's just a thing out here, but he was fixing my chin. He's like removing the oil from my skin. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is happening right now? To sit and watch somebody Photoshop your face is the craziest thing. So that picture, <laughs> like it was fine before. And it's hard because they didn't speak English. So I'm thinking, um, how do you say that's enough? <laughs> My skin is way more matte and less oily in that picture. Maybe it's a good thing. <laughs> uh, 
it happened to me in Qatar. Fartoon, that is crazy. Maybe it's just a thing out here. Okay, I'm seeing another question that's like the stay-at-home mom one. How can I be feminine in 31 year? I think uh, what you're asking is at 31 years old. So how can I be feminine is not connected to an age. Drop the belief that 31 years old makes you any less feminine because asking me that way is implying that there's a limiting belief that age has anything to do with feminine energy. Some of my clients, some of my most powerful students, actually majority of my most powerful students are older. They're older than me, 40s, 50s. So why is there, belief, there the belief that age has anything to do with feminine energy? I would ask who told me this belief and why am I still choosing it? Some part of the brain likes this belief. It likes staying stuck. It likes suffering probably because the idea of being so embodied in feminine energy is scary. So it's telling you 31 years old is going to be my limitation so that I can stay comfortable. Who told me that? Ooh. Let's see. My friends make me feel old at 28 years old. It makes me uncomfortable. Mm. My mom would always tell me, nobody can make you feel anything, you choose it. So if your friends, first of all, if you have friends that are giving you comments that are not appropriate, they're no longer your friends. They are acquaintances that you have just moved to an outer circle. And then I would ask, why does it bother me? Do I deeply have that belief that 28 is old, which girl, no, it is not. I would ask, why am I friends with these women? And why am I triggered by this comment? Thank you, Sandra. Please do a skincare routine. Thank you, girl. I think I might do that in my next vlog. Uh, yes, JJ. So the Feminine Glow app, a lot of ladies who live in certain countries have a hard time joining the app. I think it's only available for certain countries. If you go to the feminineglow.com and try to join our group page and you can't, it's probably because there's a restriction in your country. I'm so sorry, girl. Another method could be if you just Google the feminineglow.com and create a profile, I believe you can still access the Glow Girl group and the Glow Girl book club. So you just have to do it from a browser rather than the app. Mastering Feminine Energy, I have a course called Master Your Feminine Energy. That is the best place to start to invest in your inner work and your feminine energy. I also get the question all the time through email, which course do I join? It's very hard to answer that because what happens with the courses? It is the craziest thing. Women who join my business course, which is Divine Aligned and the Gold Vault, which is my money and abundance course. Those courses end up changing relationships and romance life so deeply. Whereas more of my relationship courses and just um, feminine energy, Seductively Savage and Master Your Feminine Energy courses, those open the door for women to start businesses. One of my girls in Seductively Savage, you know who you are and I'm so just blown away and amazed by you. She posted in our Seductively Savage group page, she goes, Ladies, I have something so exciting to share. I am applying to be an astronaut. I'm going to start down that path and I'm so excited. I, all of us in there were like, oh my gosh, tell us every step, this is so exciting. Seductively Savage is my course that I made for you to activate the dark feminine energy and drop the nice girl mask to actually invite that sensual goddess energy in. That's what I created the course for. What it's doing is unlocking different careers and business ideas for the women in it. Where my business courses, women say, my relationship is changing. It's so much more juicy and passionate and I feel so much more confident being a woman because of this. So it's like the reason that the courses were created were swapped. When you go and you're, maybe you have a course on your mind that you want to join, ask your body before you ask me because your body will tell you where the key is that you need. Maybe it's in the gold vault. Maybe it's in Seductively Savage. Your body will tell you better than I can tell you. It will just know. It will feel the name. It will look at that page and it will know. 
<laughs> I love it. Are you opening coaching again? I do coaching with a few of my clients that I've had for the past year, past two years. New coaching spots are only available once one of them decides to take a break. So that's why there's still that wait list. Oh, girl, thank you. Dubai is doing its thing. You look amazing. Thank you so much. Yes. Ooh, Sylvia. Oh my gosh, Sylvia, I'm so excited to see you in book club this Sunday. <laughs> By the way, ladies, anybody is welcome to join book club. It's on the feminineglow.com. Sylvia says, for those who can't use the app, you can also use a VPN to get on the app if your country doesn't give access. Thank you, girl, for sharing that tip. Okay, ladies. Oh my gosh, I almost lost track of time. I am going to go and pick up my Emirates ID so that I can finally move into my apartment and sign for it. I've loved being with you. Thank you so much for joining this live. I know if you're in the US, it is so early for you. <laughs> it is 4 p.m. for me. So thank you so much, ladies. I love and appreciate your time and your energy always. I cannot wait to see you again. Hopefully it will be from my apartment. And I hope that you have a beautiful weekend. Bye, everybody.